All right, so let's come back in with example five. And again, just showing you sorts of different things that you're going to see with implicit applications on the AP and FRQ section. Uh, this one, you've seen this before. We want to find the equation of a tangent line, which of course means that we need a point and the slope. Now, very nicely, they gave us our point is 3, 1. So we'll have that down. So what we have to do is we need to calculate and find the slope. So our work for finding the slope, uh, we would need to take the derivative, clearly implicit, because we have x's and y's mixed together. So we show that we're going to take the derivative implicitly. Now, we just need to be careful. And again, this is one of those ones where we're just testing our rules to make sure that you are taking the derivative using all the correct rules. That in this part right here, you've got three stuff squared, so you're gonna have to use your chain rule. And here you've got a product, so you're gonna have to use your product rule. So going through three stuff squared, the derivative would be six times the stuff to the first, and then you gotta do times the derivative of the stuff. Derivative of x squared is two x, the derivative of y squared is 2y dy dx, the chain rule from implicit, equals, then we take our product rule here. Um, I'll, I'll just put the 100 with the x. So I would do 100x first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first, and that would get us to there. Now, at this point, I'm going to draw a little line right here and say that you have some options. You can either solve for dy dx and then evaluate it at 3, 1. That's option number one. Option number two is to simply plug in 3, 1 now. And I'm going to say that unless they have asked you to solve for dy dx, I would go ahead and simply do the plugging in because that typically is a little bit less algebra. So let's put a star by this one and say, I would do that. That would probably be my preference. So because what you can do here, then it just turns it into a numbers problem. Your x squared plus y squared would be 9 plus 1, 6 times 10. That's this portion. Then you would have 2 times 3, that's 6. And then 2 dy dx equals, and then over here, move myself down out of the way. We would have 100 times x, so 300 dy dx, plus 100 times 1, 100. Now, and, and this is pretty easy. You do need to, however, say, because of your linkage, I would say when x equals 3, y equals 1, because you want to make sure you know that you're plugging it in. Um, and then I would solve for dy dx after the fact, once I've got numbers here, because I can pretty much be like, okay, 60 times 6 would be 360 plus 60 times 2, I'm distributing here, uh, 120 dy dx equals 300 dy dx plus 100, subtract your 120, subtract your 100, uh, 260, so dy dx equals 26 over 18, and if you want to simplify, 13 over 9. Um, and then just make sure that you don't forget you haven't answered the question. All we've done now, that was all the work for finding your slope, and so now we have to actually write the answer to the question. y equals 13 ninths x minus 3 plus 1 would be the equation of the tangent line. All right, let's take a look at the next example. All right, example six. Sometimes in problems, they just want you to actually find dy dx. And usually what they do here is they'll say find dy dx in terms of x and y, which means that you have to solve for dy dx. Uh, so this is just really just the algebra that they're making you practice. So you show that you're taking the derivative with respect to x. And I will say that sometimes for these long ones, um, it's a little bit of what I call tedious because it's writing and it just takes a little while. But don't be lazy. Make sure you write everything. Now, notice I went ahead and rewrote that tangent squared as tangent with the square on the outside so that I know that I'm using chain rule. 
Uh, so we go ahead and we take our derivative. Derivative of y is dy dx. The derivative of x squared is 2x. y squared, 2y, dy dx, minus the derivative of stuff squared would be 2 times the stuff to the first. Then I have to take the derivative of the stuff. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. But that had stuff, so I have to follow it with the derivative of that stuff, which product rule, x dy dx plus y times 1. You'll get used to seeing this one because it comes up a lot. I can guarantee you that if they're going to make you do an implicit, they're going to have an x, y you have to take the derivative of. All right, now in this problem, we have a dy dx here, here, and here. So we're going to have to group these together. Um, kind of taking a look at this, I would also, you know, say this whole thing right here, just keep together because it's just a product and you're distributing it times the two items over the addition right there. So, and you're going to move everything that has a dy dx to the same side. So here's a dy dx. I'm just going to keep it on this side. I'm going to move this one over to that side. So I'm going to subtract. 2y dy dx, and then over here, um, you're going to multiply this times the first one and then add it to the other side, so plus 2 tangent of xy secant squared of xy times that x dy dx, so we get it over on that side, and it's a plus because I added it to the other side, equals and then this 2x was not on the was on the right hand side, so we'll just put it back. Uh, we moved that over. We did this, so now we're gonna do this times the second one. So we have our minus 2 tangent of xy secant squared of xy times y. Let's put a little time symbol in there. So you separate it out so that you have your dy dx. They're all on the same side, and it might be fairly ugly like this, but that's what we do want to do. Now we factor out the dy dx. 1 minus 2y plus 2 tangent of xy secant squared of xy. Now this x, let's bring it to the front of that. Sometimes that makes it a little easier not to lose it. So I would do plus 2x, so that way it's not combined in with those. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Let's make that bring this y I had at the end over to the front. So we have tangent of xy secant squared of xy. And then you just need to divide. Like I said, your hand's going to fall off when you're doing these. But it's fairly straightforward. Um, they're going to, when they do the AP, what they're going to do is they're going to first check that you have taken the derivative correctly. And if you haven't taken the derivative correctly, you're, you're going to be out. This is usually worth two points on an FRQ. So what they'll do is they'll first come in and they'll check this line right here. They'll check this portion right here, and you'll get one point for that. And then they'll check that you did correct legal algebra. And it may be you take more steps than what I did to get down there, but they just check your solving and you get your second point for correctly solving for your derivative on that. Um, and, and that's pretty straightforward. So that's usually one part of a free response where they usually say, find the derivative, or they might say, show that this derivative is equal to this, where they'll actually give you the answer. And your job is to show that you know how to take the derivative and do the algebra to get there. Um, that's typically what they do because then there's a part B where they then use this derivative to answer some questions. And so that way they you have a shot at getting B correct, even if you didn't get A, because A is just kind of procedure, step-by-step uh, -step procedure. All right, let's look at our last example, example seven. Now in this one, we're trying to find a second derivative. And just like many things in the AP, you're going to have two options for this. One, you're going to find your first derivative, solve for dy dx first, and then find your second derivative. Or we're going to find the second derivative by taking the first derivative, skipping the solving step, and then finding the second derivative. 
Now, I am going to highlight something because this is something in the AP you want to be careful of. They want this as a function of x and y, and that's going to be something that's important. So I'm going to put a star by that, and we'll come back to that after we do the problem. Okay, so now let's take a look at our solving. We're going to do part A first here. So we're going to take our derivative with respect to x. We'll get our first derivative of 2x cubed minus 3y squared equal to 8. Uh, 6x squared minus 6y, chain rule, dy dx equals 0. Then we will solve for dy dx. dy dx is equal to um, subtract and then divide, so it ends up being x squared over y. And then once we get to that's all that's finding your first derivative. Now you will find the second derivative by taking the derivative. Again, you're going to show that you're doing the derivative again. The derivative of the derivative is the second derivative. Use correct notation. And then over here, to do this derivative, I am going to need to use quotient rule. So we do low d high minus our high d low. Uh, which would be dy dx all over my low squared. Now, at this point, you might think that you are done, but I want to pause for a second and I want you guys to take a look at this. What I want to remind you of is that they said they wanted you to find the second derivative as a function of x and y. Now, the problem that I have down here and why we are not as a function of x and y, is you have your second derivative as a function of y and x and the first derivative. So you are going to need to substitute that out before you are done. So this is 2xy minus x squared. Take this, plug it in, and so that's going to be your last step to get your points for that. Uh, so x squared over y and then over y squared. And so then you are done with the problem and you would get your full credit. Okay, now we're going to do the same problem a different way. We're going to take the derivative and we're going to get it to this point right here. So the first part, I'm just going to bring it over and import it, would be exactly the same. You would get to here and you have taken the derivative. That's what we have done so far. Now over here, we solved for dy dx and then we took a second derivative. Our option here is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take the derivative, your second derivative, right here without solving. Okay, so that's going to get us to there, and that's, of course, oops, I guess I should not close that, equal to zero. So we're going to take that derivative. Now, as I go to take that derivative, uh, you want to be very careful about notation. Uh, this is going to be 12x minus... Now, this is one that catches you guys. This is a product. It's this times this, so we're going to have to use product rule. So let's leave the 6y together. We have the minus. Let's do parentheses. So I would do first times derivative of the second. The derivative of the derivative is the second derivative plus, uh, the minus is on the outside. Then we're going to do dy dx times the derivative of 6y, which is going to be 6 dy dx, and that then of course equal to 0. Now what we want to be careful of here is we're trying to find this second derivative. Now I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to simplify minus 6y second derivative minus 6. Now be very careful here. This is not the second derivative. This is the first derivative squared equal to zero. Now I'm going to solve for these, the second derivative. I'm going to pause it because of the time, do that, and then come back and check. Okay, we do want to go ahead and take a look at what I have here. And you'll see that when you get to here, you are not done. It is not a function of x and y. So I still had to do that substitution. I don't think it saves you time to use this method. So I think that you should do this, put a star over here and say that's the better method. Okay, so that will finish up our implicit practice. We'll do some FRQs next time.